Hi, so the mould is now dried, um, so the next stage is to go through the sanding process. So I'm not going to bore you with what would be the most boring video in the world of me spending hours sanding down this, but it's a bit of a labour intensive uh, process. So at the minute, you're not going to be able to see this, but um, this is the current state of the mould. A terrible camera work there. Um, and we're going to go through starting off with 240 grit paper and working up to about 1200 grit paper uh, wet and dry and hopefully have a, quite a good surface finish at the end of that which we can then wax and put a release agent on and uh, and then start to epoxy in carbon fibre. So I'm just going to skip ahead to after the sanding. Okay so I finished off the sanding which didn't take as long as I thought it was going to do, luckily. Um, but I've got a now a mould with a nice smooth finish on it. Um, and I ended up with a 1200 grit wet and dry, which I was using with some water to give a nice smooth, uh, uniform, even finish and all of those good words that basically means that the finish on here should represent itself on the outside of the finished disc cover. Um, so it's in the interest to get a nice, a nice finish on here. So the next stage of the process is to use something called a release agent to basically stop the carbon fibre disc cover sticking into the mould when it comes to trying to, try to pull it out. So traditionally um, we use something uh, called a wax, um, which is basically like a beeswax or something you would maybe polish a table with. Um, and the new kit on the block from EC Composites is an easy lease release agent. Um, and this is basically a very thin fluid, which I guess is going to put a, a small coating on something like a non-stick frying pan coating on the surface of the mould. So it's going to stop everything sticking to it and hopefully release off. Now, there was some ambiguity on the Easy Composites website about whether you could use the easy lease alongside the wax or whether you should use one or the other. So I had contacted their, their helpline or their, their web chat and I heard I spoke to a guy called Warren who was really helpful and he said that basically you can put this on first and then the wax afterwards and that will give you the best chance of getting a nice release from the moulding. So that's what I'm going to do. So the Easy Lease, the release agent, um, is a thin liquid and you're meant to put five coats on onto the mould and each one uh, wait 15 minutes for it to dry. And you're gonna pour it on and uh, it's gonna evaporate away and you're gonna sort of swill it around while it's doing all that. So let's try this. Just put a little bit on, work it around the mold, and then Again, yeah, probably should do this in a well ventilated area, not uh, a small room like this. But if you want to get as high as a kite, that's fine. There we go. So that's basically it. So you do that five times, wait a quarter of an hour between each one to, to dry. Um, and then after the fifth coat, you're meant to leave it one hour. Um, and then you can apply the wax after that. So we'll go and do that, and I'll show you how to do the waxing when we get to that stage. Excellent. Morning, so it's another day, another t-shirt. Um, I've left this easy lease to dry overnight and now it's ready for the next stage of the process which is the, the, the wax. So again, this is the same as this is a release agent. This is used to stop the carbon fibre sticking in the mould and make it come out nice and easy and not leave any, any surface problems. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit like shoe polish, it's kind of a, a, a hard wax um, and use it much the same as shoe polish. So I'm going to use a cloth to apply some in small circular motions to cover the, the, the entire mould and then I'm going to wait 15 minutes, lightly polish it and try not to remove any of the wax um, and that will just give a good surface finish and we're going to repeat that process three times um, and after that we should be ready to put some epoxy in. So we'll just go through this process, I'll do some uh, time lapse of videography to, so it's not a really boring video so here goes
Right, that's done. Okay, so, so the mould now is completely covered in a thin film of wax. I leave that 15 minutes to dry um, and then I can polish it, repeat and then ready for some carbon fibre after that, which should be the fun bit. So, see you in a little while. Hello, back again. So we're nearly here now, we're nearly there. Um, I've given this mould three coats of wax, um, so that should help the carbon fibre part come out of the mould nice and easy. So the next stage, we're nearly ready to start playing with carbon fibre, but not quite. The next stage of the process is to coat this, the inside of this mould with a um, epoxy resin. So epoxy resin is the glue that binds the carbon fibre together. And it does contribute towards the strength of the carbon fibre, but the majority of the strength is keeping the carbon fibre strands in tension all the time. Carbon fibre is very good in tension, not so good in compression. Um, and this, this helps bind them together, essentially. Um, so this is fairly runny, um, or fairly low viscosity, um, and it's a mixture of uh, epoxy resin and hardener with a ratio of 100 parts by weight of epoxy and 30 parts by hardener. So I've mixed that here only in a small quantity. I've done, um, I've done 33 grams in weight of the epoxy and 10 grams of of the, the hardener and from the easy composites websites there's two different types of hardener you can get uh, a fast acting one and a slow acting one um, I've picked the slow one because it gives you more time to to make sure everything's right I'm not in no rush then to lay the carbon fiber in it does however mean it takes a full day before you can take it out of the mold but I've got time so I'm just going to use a paintbrush to paint this on and then I'm going to leave it about eight hours to come become tacky and then I'm going to put the carbon fibre in at the next stage. I'll go through how to mix this up when I come to do the carbon fibre but for the moment I've just pre-mixed it. It's not rocket science. So I get my brush. Again you probably should be wearing PPE, blah blah blah, health and safety. So I'm just going to give this a coat. Not a massively thick coat, just brush it on like you would paint. And I'll try to then smooth it out with a brush as much as I can. I'll also go past the edge of the mould. Um, I have waxed all around the mould and past the edge and that will allow um, me to give something some excess to trim off later. Right, so that's, I'm going to put this brush in the freezer, in a bag, and that should mean I can use it again um, later to do the carbon fibre, or else it will just dry out and come too junky. Um, I'm just going to come and pick you up now and put you over here. So what we can see, bear with me. So I'm going to take you over to here, and you can see on the video that the wax is obviously having an effect because the epoxy is starting to bead. So this is the same effect as if you were to take, you know, wash your car and wax it. The water, um, there's a low surface tension of the fluid and it will tend to form beads rather than actually wet to the surface. So that's quite interesting. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually desirable or what kind of effect we're going to get, but uh, we'll see. So I'm going to leave this for a couple of hours um, to start to go a little bit tacky and Obviously you can see the area here where the mould's going to go, so I'll probably just touch with my finger around here in a couple of hours and see how tacky it is. And then I can put another small coat of um, epoxy down to bond to this, and then I'll start laying the carbon fibre. And hopefully that will ensure that the carbon fibre doesn't touch the surface of the mould, which is what uh, I've done in the past. Right, see how that goes.